Hello friends, this is Dr. Arbi Kuso, Associate Professor at Scotch Jammu. Welcome to my YouTube channel and if you are new to my channel, so kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for the further notification. Today we are going to discuss about the radiographic explanation of bilateral supracondylar fracture of femur bone in a 4 month old Spitz male dog. This dog had a hit injury one day back. So you could see this is the mediolateral view of the right femur bone. This is the mediolateral view of the left femur bone and this is the craniocaudal view of both right and left femur bone in a single. So if you see this uh, right femur bone so you could see here the head of the femur is placed in the cotyloid cavity normally but if you see here there is a separation of the condyle of the this bone from the this fracture is basically classified under the salter harris uh, type 1 in which there is a separation of the physis so after separation of the physis the condyles deviated cranially whereas the proximal fracture fragment deviated cordially and you could see this is the patella these are the two fabelli this is the tibia this one is the apophysis of the tibia so here the apophysis is intact so by this you could say this is the radiograph of a young dog in history i told that this is the four months old spitz dog if you see the mediolateral view of the left side of the femur bone so contrary to the right femur bone here in the left femur bone condyles deviated cordially whereas the this proximal fracture fragment deviated slightly cranially this is the craniocaudal view of the this both femur bone you could see here and for this the animal is positioned in the dorsal uh, recumbency we extend the both hind limb and pull cordially to expose the cranial surface of the this femur bone so that's why we say the craniocaudal view but sometime uh, physician or surgeon they used to write the vento dorsal but in fact this is the craniocaudal view so if you see the, this craniocaudal view so definitely uh, from the distance is appear that okay it could be normal but uh, uh, you could see here there is separation at the both craniocaudal deviation in this particular view is basically superimposed so here we could see the only the lateral and the medial deviation and this particular fracture there is a no uh, lateral or medial deviation it is only the craniocaudal deviation so that is why in the craniocaudal view it appears that okay particularly this left one okay it's almost normal but it is the not like that now there are so many techniques for the management of the supracondylar fracture but cross pinning is the most common in cross pinning we can go for the either the static cross pinning or the dynamic cross pinning in the static cross pinning uh, normally uh, two short pin pass from the each side of the condyle so overall uh, four pin here like this but uh, the disadvantage of that uh, it is very difficult to remove the this static pin the other one is the dynamic cross pinning so for surgical procedure of the dynamic cross pinning i have already uploaded the one video so you could see uh, that video for easy understanding of the, this uh, whole procedure but uh, normally what we do after opening the this stifle joint we pass the 2 or 2.5 mm uh, k wire uh, from the lateral epicondyle like this and from the medial epicondyle like this so these are the radiograph which has been taken immediately after uh, operation this is the mediolateral view of the right femur bone this is the mediolateral view of the left femur bone and this is the craniocaudal view of the since the fracture is salter harris type so it is very difficult to appreciate here but you could see here the patella is here and the, almost the reduction is in the anatomical uh, position and you could see uh, these two pins crossing like this and even you could see the crossing of the pin here in the contralateral limb this is the mediolateral view of the left uh, femur bone so you could see here again this is the crossing of the pin here like this and you could see here it is uh, appears better than uh, this particular uh, bone so you could see the patella is here overall the mediolateral view of the both right and left femur bone uh, reveals that the pin placement uh, are correct and the position of the distal and proximal fracture fragment are also in an alignment and good position so if you see that this craniocaudal view of the both femur bones you could appreciate here that how the k wire which inserted from the medial epicondyle it goes like this and then touches the this cortex and it emerges from the 
tokentric fossa laterally and the lateral pin which is inserted it emerges through the tokentric fossa medially since it has been taken in the cranium portal so there is angulation of the, this femur bone uh, in respect to the x-ray beam so that is why the portion which is outside the tokentric fossa it appears very long but it is not actually if you compare with this one so this is okay so if you see the left side of so left side is also very good you could see the, the alignment of the, this uh, medial cortex it is in alignment with the, this uh, uh, condyles as well as this the lateral one is also in the alignment here it is all in alignment this particular video is immediately after the uh, bandaging as far as the this post-operative medication is concerned so definitely it is a routine one that is antibiotic analgesic and some other supportive uh, uh, treatment. This is all about the, this uh, radiographic explanation of the bilateral uh, supracondyl fracture of femur bone in a four months old Spitz dog. So thank you very much for watching this video and if you like this video so kindly share with your friends and subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed yet. Thank you very much.